Today I have five farmhouse Christmas neutral themed DIYs. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own. First one is going to be a Merry Christmas sign. I'm going to use some of this home decor stain. This is like a wood tint and it's in gray. It's from Folk Art. A little chippy brush here. This I got from the thrift store. It is a paper banner. And it happens to fit this sign that I got from Dollar Tree. Perfect. You'll still be able to see the hole, but I can fix that a little bit. So here is this one. They make them in, um, I think they have some Christmas ones too, but I like the one that is just kind of, doesn't have any paint on it. We're going to fix it though. So I had some little creases. I'm just fixing my little banner there. I'm going to cut the tag and hanger off of this sign. Easily enough done. And then we're going to work on staining this wood. This is just a beautiful piece. I love, I love, love, love this piece of wood. You can see all the grain in it. It's just, it's really pretty. And to think that you get that for a dollar, it's pretty amazing. All right, so I've shaken up that stain and I'm, or that tint, and I'm just gonna start brushing this on this wood. It does not have a foul smell. It is very easy to clean up. I just use a paper towel to wipe off my cutting mat. I've been using this to paint on, and it works pretty good. It's thick, won't let anything get on my table underneath. And you just try to go with the grain of the wood. It just happens to look better that way, and it's very pretty. I think I'll take a dry paper towel and just start kind of wiping that off. Again, kind of with the grain. You can see some of it comes off, some of it stays on the wood. It's very subtle, but it is a gray color and it's really pretty. I'll show you the difference. So here's, there you go. You can see the natural side, and then after it's dried, we're gonna flip this over and I'm just gonna use some of this masking tape to cover up the hole in the back. I wasn't entirely sure how to fill this hole in in the first place because it would take a lot of lightweight spackle to fill in that. So I have another way that I'm gonna disguise it. No problem. See there, that fits almost entirely to the end and that's gonna work for me. I'm just kind of looking at it to see how centered I can actually make it. And just kind of look by eye first and then grab my ruler and look at a couple of points here and pull it down where it needs to be. And then I'm just using my clamp so that it doesn't slide around when I start gluing it. And it's just, you know, kind of a guide for me so it doesn't move. I'm just going to add dots and lines underneath there. I was trying to be really delicate at first because I was afraid it might show through this paper, but it's pretty thick. It's almost like a fabric. It's, you know, thicker than cardstock. And then I'm just going to clamp it just to make sure I don't pull anything loose when I go to the other side to glue it down. Same thing here. So how's everybody feeling today? Are we crafting? Are we in the Christmas spirit yet? I know I am. All right. So I've chosen these stars. I was going to use wreaths in the beginning, little tiny wreaths, but I think these stars look great. I got them from the thrift store. They're just wooden and they are, it looks like somebody had brushed them with some gold paint. It's a really pretty muted gold. I like it. I did make a mess here. So I'm just going to go back over with some ribbon and kind of trim this out. And this came from Dollar Tree, this ribbon. It is a very neutral color and it has just a little bit of a gold trim. And I don't mind that. I'm not, you know, I'm not huge into metallics, but I think at Christmas time, it's time to, to bring out your bright, shiny everything, right? Bright, shiny, everything, or your shiny brights, whatever you have. And it just, I don't know, it just brings a little joy to me. You know, the little sparkle, the way the light catches it. It's those little things, you know? Be sure that you cut your angles so that they kind of match the angle on the end of your sign there. It's like a dovetail, so just be sure that you get your slant right. Make it nice and, and finished and pretty. And then you can start placing down the stars. And you see that covers up that hole perfectly. I didn't even need to do all that work with the tape on the back, but that's okay. You live, you learn. Now I'm just trying to make sure that I get the angles right because it would drive me nuts if they were not matchy when I got done. But you see there, I got it right. 
All right, so then now we have holes in the end where the hangers were. I'm just taking a little bit of brown paint that looked a little grayish brown to me. It turns out it really doesn't match that well, but it does cover up the white from the spackle that I put in there. You can leave this alone if you want. You could cover it up with something else, but you're going to see shortly that I'm going to fix it completely. All right, now we're going to take a piece of this jute. This is thick jute. I got it from the thrift store, but you can certainly get it from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to put two knots layered right on top of one another. And you can see how I slide the knots down so that they aren't separated. Cut it off close to the knot with one end being a little bit long. And you're going to do the same thing again so that you have two of these. Cut it off right next to the knot without cutting through it. And then I'm going to make sure that my little pieces here are the same size. And we're going to glue this string on the back. And the reason I left it kind of long in the beginning because I wanted to see how much I wanted that string to poke out, you know, once it is hung up. I don't want it to be very long. I want it to fit like above a door. So this would be a good length, just like that. Just a little hot glue and a little masking tape. Now I'm going to take those little knotted sections there and I'm going to glue those down with a knot down and the rope hanging out. This gives the illusion that that rope is going through your sign. And I didn't have to get out the drill to drill another hole to actually hang it through there. But you can certainly do that. You know, it's an option. But there you go. And I think it turned out pretty good. Follow me on my social media, Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. The next one is a Rustic Noel wreath. So this is a grapevine wreath that I have used for several crafts. And I'm going to use it again. I've probably had this thing for 20 years. It is about 15 inches. You can use whatever you like. And then I have some thrifted picks that are absolutely gorgeous. It looks like they came from Michael's about 100 years ago. There you go. But they're really pretty and they're not frosted. And I wanted to do something that wasn't frosted in this wreath. I've got some Southern Living ribbon that was thrifted. The little snowflake ribbon on the side was thrifted, and then the other two came from Dollar Tree. The bigger ones are wired, just so you know. Now, these particular picks happen to kind of give you the option of having them flat on the back, which I love because I don't have to do so much arranging. I start off by poking the stem down into here, but you can see that this is a struggle. I actually cut my pinky finger doing this. I'm telling you, I have the thinnest skin ever. I think it goes along with being a redhead with freckles. We just don't have a lot of collagen. Now I'm going to use a piece of this wire and I'm going to go into like the center without pressing anything down and then wrap it around the back. It's so funny. I watch other crafters. I, I, I'm not as good about it as I used to be, but I was watching Trish from Crafting Cousins and she did a wreath that just reminded me so much of this. I just, you know, creative minds think alike, I believe. You should check her out, her and Kay out at Crafting Cousins. All right, so I'm gonna continue around here and I'm just sort of doing a semicircle and I'm layering them with the stems downward and then just wiring them down to that frame where they need to be wired. Next, we're going to work on this bow. Guys, this is a gorgeous bow. If you are into bows, you are going to love this one. So we're going to use 10-inch loops. And I think I mentioned this is wired ribbon. So we're going to one, two, three, and then I'm just counting here to see how many I got. So you're going to loop it over on itself three or four times. And then you can trim it off and go on to your next ribbon. This is some thick stuff. I love this ribbon. Then we're going to go to the next one. And it's going to be about 10 inches. I think I managed to get it a little bit smaller when I was folding, but that's okay. Going to continue to go folding, folding over on itself. And then cut it off. It doesn't have to be the same amount of loops as the other one, by the way. Just whatever you want to do. So now this one, and this is thrifted also, and I got this from, um, I think this comes from maybe Michael's or Hobby Lobby in the wedding section. I believe I've seen it when I've been in there shopping before. Really pretty. It's got little pearl beads on the side. Just really pretty. So now I'm going to bend this in half, this stack, and I'm going to take my scissors, try to line my edges up, and just cut into it. You want to cut through that edge and barely into the burlap or the fabric 
whichever ribbon you're using. I'm folding again to find my center point. Cut just through the wire, just through the wire, because this isn't burlap, it's thinner. And then this one, because it is so thick, I'm using my pliers here, my little cutters, to just cut into the wire and a little bit into the burlap. So now we are going to start stacking this bow. Make sure that your loops are on top and that that free edge, that straight edge is on the bottom. Those are gonna be the tails, those straight parts. So we're gonna take a, <laughs> I doubted if I was gonna be able to get this entire bunch into this zip tie, but it worked. So um, yeah, you're gonna take a zip tie for this one. It's gonna take a lot of tugging on this bow to get it all fluffed out. The struggle is real, but I'm going to tell you right now, it is so worth it. So worth it. All the work, and I like it. There's something about touching all that fabric, pulling all of those pieces apart, and seeing what it comes up to look like. Because when you first do it, it just looks like, you know, panels of fabric or panels of ribbon. It's flat, and you start questioning things, and then as you fluff from the bottom upward, that's how I do it, you just start to see this beautiful form start to take shape. Look at that, already it's starting to look so much better. Now you can cut off those little tails or you can dovetail them, whichever way you wanna do it. Be sure that the pretty side is up and generally you can flip those over if it's a good quality um, fabric. This particular ribbon wasn't very good quality so I didn't even bother with it, I just cut those off. And then going on to the burlap and the other ribbon, I thought those would look nice dovetailed. Give it a little more dimension and I think that looks pretty. And we're gonna continue along dovetailing. You know how to do that. And this kind of keeps the frays out of your bows too, so you don't have anything frayed out. You want it to look high end, right? And if you gave something like this as a gift, nobody would ever know it was handmade. It's just so pretty. Look at the colors. What do you think about the burlap, the white, and the silver? Is that not stunning? Oh, I love that. I love it so much. Okay, so now we need tails for the ribbon. So I'm just gonna stretch out my ribbon and I'm gonna go 18 inches. That's how long this ruler is. I'm gonna cut it off and I'm gonna do 18 inches also of this one. And then the burlap ribbon with the pearls, it's probably 20 inches long and I left it long. That's all I had left of that ribbon. So I'm gonna finish it off. Okay, so they're dovetailed and I'm stacking them. And you can just decide which way that you wanna stack it. You know, which one you want in the back, which one you want in the front, how you want it to lay down. Um, if you have different patterns, you know, decide how you wanna do your patterns. For me, the idea is to give it some variety and kind of separate it, but to be sure that all of them get a little bit of attention. So I wanted to let that snowflake piece be on top. Taking another zip tie, we're gonna go around the center, cinch it really well and trim it off. And then we're gonna find our placement on this beautiful wreath. So you can go down low and fill the whole thing in, or you can leave a little space on the side, which is what I ended up doing to put another piece there. So I'm just wrapping some wire around and tying it and twisting it. And then I'm gonna thread some wire through this bow on the bottom and then put it on as close as I can to the greenery without overlapping it. Twist it around in the back and then press it into your wreath so you don't have any wires hanging out. And again with the fluffing. Yes, yes, you must always do this, always, always. And for the love of Pete, if you ever take a wreath out of a box, please fluff it before you hang it on your wall. It's gonna make so much difference. I promise you, you'll be so much happier with it. So I'm just kind of playing around with the tails here to see what I wanna do. And then that's when it hit me. I think I need to do another project. So here comes the Noel mini sign, which you can use on your wreath or by itself. So I'm just gonna take a really pretty Christmas card. I got it at the thrift store. You can get beautiful cards at Dollar Tree or anywhere else you wanna go. I just weakened that seam with my fingernails, flipping it back and forth, and then put my ruler on it and pulled it off nicely. Now I'm just using my finger to roll the little edge under. This came from Kirkland's, but I thrifted it. And I'm gonna use some of this 
medium gray folk art paint and I'm going to start painting over this sign. Now if you use a flat brush like I'm using, you can see how I'm doing it to get close to the edge where you don't have to tape it off. Isn't that great? You just kind of push it upward, push it upward, and then pull it back. Perfect. You can do your corners that way. Easy, easy. And you're saving yourself some time without having to use all that tape. So we're gonna, it's not, you can still see a little bit through it, but it'll be covered by the card. So once it's dry, you're gonna take that card and I love that it matches perfectly to the color in this card. Just gonna add some hot glue. You can put this on any way you like. But using hot glue, I could always peel this card off and use the frame for another project. Okay, so you could use it just like that on your coffee bar or anywhere else. But I'm gonna add a wire because we're gonna add this to the wreath. Easiest project ever, right? Easiest one ever. Okay, so wrapping some wire around it. We're gonna set it down on the wreath, right where the tails of the bow and the greenery meet. It's gonna cover up that stem and give it a little more interest. Twist that tie around it, and there you have it. I'm gonna use, it's trying to fold over just a little bit, you know, hang over, so I'm just gonna use a little bit of hot glue to help secure it. A couple of dots on the frame uh, and on the wreath and on the ribbon. And our next project is a cozy yarn Christmas tree. This is another easy one. Okay, so I thrifted this very fuzzy, soft, comfy, fat yarn. It's blanket yarn. I've got some Dollar Tree twine there with some berries and a couple of pieces of wood scraps and then another one of those stars. Here's some more ribbon that coordinates with the stuff we've already been using. I'm gonna take this cone and sit it down right on top of a piece of felt. I'm pretty sure you can get white felt at Dollar Tree. I think it's rolled up and it's in the craft section. So just a tad of the cooler temperature hot glue to go down on here because that foam will melt. I wanna have a good base because I don't wanna burn myself or have anything collapse. You can also wrap this in tape, but this is so much quicker. And I had it on hand, so that makes it great. All right, just folding it under and I'm going to add a little bit of glue there. For the tip of it, I wanna make it a little bit taller and thinner. So I'm just gonna fold the tip over. But you can see what I'm doing with a little of the glue. And then I'm just gonna start trying to form it as best I can to give it a little more of a cone type shape without having that flat top. And I'm just going to keep doing that with my glue and my fingers. You can buy me a coffee to show me some love. The link's in the description box below. Okay, so I'm just kind of pressing it with my fingers and you can see it looks kind of crazy, but it won't look like that when we're done. It does give a little more height to the tree though. All right, so I'm going to lay this down where it is slightly overlapping the edge so that you don't see the bottom of that foam. And then using a cooler temp glue, of course, and protecting my fingers tremendously. I'm gonna go around this tree just like this. I'm put that line close to the other line of yarn, that other row, and then pressing those together. In the end, if there are any spots that are a little bit bare, you can fill those in, just a little more glue, and just kind of pressing them together. That's the beauty of this fluffy yarn. It's like furry, it's got like a, you know, a blanket texture. It's easy, easy to work with. So I'll show you how we're gonna do the tip of it so that it actually sticks down. The glue needs to be really close to the row that is underneath it, just like this, and I'm pushing downward toward that row, rolling it kind of downward. Okay, so we're up to the top. I'm gonna add some glue here, and I'm just gonna kind of swirl it, almost like a cinnamon roll, on the top until all of that white is covered, and then just trim it off. You can use a little more hot glue there and just continue that little that little swirl. So see, I had a little gap and I just added some glue and, and pressed it down. Little gap there, it's where it's trying to come apart. No problem, A little bit of glue, we can fix it. You can't see any of the white now, can you? And it looks like a little tree, a little fuzzy tree. Okay, so I'm gonna add some glue in the bottom, pretty much where I think the center would be, and I'm gonna use the stick for the trunk I'm gonna poke that in there, and then this little slice, 
is going to be the base. It's going to hold the tree up. So be sure that your stand is big enough that your tree will not make it topple over. And I might just add that the cone is lightweight and this yarn is very lightweight. If you use anything that's heavier like rope, you're going to probably need a little more security to keep your tree from toppling over. All right, so we're going to take some of these pit berries start unwinding it a bit and I'm just going to place a tiny bit I mean just a just a smidge on this tree and you can see that I'm just trying to hold it in place I had a viewer when I did a project before who said that I could have used pins to hold something to styrofoam and I thought you know what that is genius I cannot remember who said it but thank you very much because I remembered that and I'm going to be applying it in this project I'm going to use my pins from my little vintage pin thing here and I'm going to go right where the berries meet this is where the wire is a little thicker it's wrapped in like a paper and I'm going to go right in between there and press it straight into my tree and it holds it beautifully and I have no messy glue strings nothing like that it's just perfect look at that okay so now I've decided that I want to use some ribbons on the top of the tree kind of give it a tree topper if you will so I'm gonna do about 18 inches of the snowflake ribbon oh that snowflake ribbon actually came from big lots I said Dollar Tree but it's from big lots and we're gonna make some very very easy little shoelace bows and you know how to do this make the two ears wrap them around simple however you make a little bow like this you can do it and I'm just working with it to make it small I don't want anything that's gonna overpower my tree and I'm gonna leave my tails long I'm just twisting it to make sure that the gold is on the outside and then we're gonna do the same thing with this other little ribbon okay then a little bit of hot glue we can stick these two together and then we'll use a pin to attach it to the tree right in the center perfection I love it I'm gonna just kind of play with those little tails a little bit and I keep struggling to get that one to turn over but it will stay it gave up the fight and then I'm just cutting my little tails at an angle you could dovetail them if you wanted but they're so small I thought just a little slant would be enough to make it look finished and loved now right in the bottom of this star I'm gonna put some hot glue and then press it down on the top toward the front near the bows and that's how she's gonna look look at that oh my goodness that's so cute so cute and it's really making me want to do gray and white and silver and gold for Christmas theme now for my age 10 owl I'm going to use this gorgeous little Avon perfume holder I find these kind of things all the time at the thrift store and I've never thought to get one and use it for anything but I'll be picking them up from now on look at all the class and beauty in that little thing I'm gonna take some rust-oleum satin nickel spray paint and after I give that thing a good bath inside and out I'm gonna spray it and then we're gonna add some of this wax to it so I took it apart and spray painted the two different pieces so we wouldn't have any gaps just like that and put it back together and she looks great already right wait till you see what happens when you put the wax on it I've never used the white wax before but I am sold on it I love being a plaid ambassador you get to try so many things and I love showing you guys different things and new techniques and this is just you're gonna love this I think you're really gonna like it so I'm just using this little brush that came from Dollar Tree and I'm swirling it into all of those textured areas on the owl's face it's almost like a feather pattern and all around his eyes all around it just like that we'll be doing the bottom in just a minute I was worried when I did this at first because I thought oh, I think I waited about like just a few seconds and then I used my paper towel to start wiping it away and I'm just stunned by the way this looks 
this is absolutely gorgeous. It looks old. It looks like an antique. Um, look at that. Look how it brings out all of the dimension in those feathers. It's just, I'm amazed. I'm really amazed. So then I thought, okay, this is cool. This, this is going to work. And I went ahead and did all of the bottom too. So all of his body got a good brush of this paint. Well, of this wax. And then again, wiping that off just a little bit. And then of course you're gonna have to let it dry. But it's so pretty by itself. I really didn't have to do anything else. But since it's Christmas time, we're gonna give him a little bit more. So I'm gonna use a piece of greenery that I pulled off of another pick. I'm gonna use a little bit of this jute. I'm gonna wrap it around where the, I guess it would be the neck. It's where the bottle top meets the bottom. I'm gonna kinda of pull it down just a little bit. And then this is actually gonna be too big. As you can see here, it's too big. So I'm gonna trim it down a little bit. Not a problem, I do this all the time. Just a little minor surgery till we can get this looking exactly how we want it. Sorry, I'm out of range there. I got so excited with the waxing, I just totally stopped paying attention to the camera. So, then we're gonna tie that on. You can just tie a little double knot. That'll hold it in place. And then trim off the excess. You could do a bow if you wanted, but I really wanted the attention to be on the owl itself, and I didn't wanna do too much to take away from his beauty. I'm gonna add another pick on the top with a little bit of hot glue. Just kind of nestling it down there where the, the piece of the jute rope and the other greenery is. And you could stop right there if you wanted. But I think I'm gonna add a little of this because it's gonna help kind of bring all of our crafts in together. They're gonna to be coordinated. So with a little hot glue, I'm just gonna put a couple of cut pieces into the little greenery pick. Just like that. So pretty. Oh my goodness. I want to put wax on everything now. There won't be anything in my house that's not waxed. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit of glue just to put that piece of greenery down. And then here are our projects. So I said five projects because they are actually five, but one of them is kind of two in one. There's our tree here. simple farmhouse just really pretty and then the beautiful owl love them Merry Christmas sign and then of course the wreath on top with the sign on it that's our two-in-one I hope that you try some of these do you like this color theme I'm loving it I'm loving it. Thank you so much for stopping by. I appreciate each and every one of you. You bring me joy. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.